Well, it's a really gruesome case, and but everyone has a right to a fair trial and to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. And you have the right to appoint a defense attorney, and if you can't afford it, the state will give you one. But the work of a defense attorney can be complex. For example, sometimes they may knowingly end up helping convicted criminals or drug lords escape prosecution. It's their job, and it's oftentimes very dangerous. So what should they say and do for their clients exactly? In the case of the 56-year-old Clava man arrested for the murder of the 13-year-old, his lawyer, Santi Human, has been very open with the media from the start. She claims the murder is a cult in nature and even recently revealed her client's home is going on sale. Does she risk her client's case, though, by revealing too much? Our resident legal expert, Sinao Makangela, is on the line now to discuss the relationship between an accused and lawyer and what that should look like if you find yourself on the wrong side of the law. Sinao, um, this is a discussion that we often have about the role of criminal attorneys. If your client is arrested and makes a full confession to you, what obligation do you have to the court in terms of revealing what your client has said and what you know? Good morning, Anik, and good morning to the viewers at home. One, the, the duty does not change in the criminal proceeding. The state always has an obligation to prove its case beyond any doubt. The accused person does not have a duty to assist the state, the state to prove its case. So there's going to be an issue of pro, uh, professional privilege and the confidentiality. So these two terms, at some stage, they may overlap. But confidentiality remains con confidential information that has been shared between an attorney and the client. Whether the attorney is still representing that client, the client may terminate the mandate of an attorney, but any information they shared together at the time of their relationship. That remains confidential. But then if you come to the professional privilege now, that which has been said at the time an attorney was performing his professional uh, uh, duties to the client, it's regulated. You may recall a few years ago uh, in the matter that involved TNT, NDPP, Zuma, NDPP as well, it went up to the constitutional court. What the court had to explain, had to tackle the issue of the professional privilege, where it had to lay down some, 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 some requirements, four requirements, that one, the information becomes a privilege. If an attorney at the time was talking to the client, was getting that information, was performing his professional uh, duties. Then secondly, the information must have occurred confidential, because you can't share the information in the public domain and say, and come back later and want to claim. The, 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 the privilege of that information, because it is no longer privilege. It's an information that would have been out there in the public. And then thirdly, you do that for the purpose of, uh, the client does that, gives you an information as a legal practitioner for the purpose of getting a legal advice, because he wants to be advised when he shares that information. And then the fourth point, it's an information that is not meant to advance the commission of an offense, fraud or crime or whatever nature. And then that information would share would enjoy the professional privilege. It's an information that would have to be kept. So, again, if you go to the confession, because the information we're getting is that the accused person in this case has confessed to an attorney. Again, even confession itself is regulated by the Criminal Procedure Act. Because if one confesses, the law lays down the requirements that confession must be written down voluntarily. And the person who does it must appreciate and must admit it to all the elements of committing an offense. Other than to say, yeah, he just said to me he has committed an offense. What happens when he goes to court, goes on trial and says, well, I deny, I dispute that I've committed this offense. So it's going to drag and drag because it will lead to what is called a trial within a trial because you must first assess whether the confession itself has met the requirements of a confession as laid down in the legislation, which is the Criminal Procedure Act. And confessions are often not taken down correctly, as we know, which is uh, why they get thrown out. But what about, Sinao, if your client confesses to you and then pleads not guilty? Do you have to withdraw? Well, there, there, there is a high possibility of a conflict of interest. And if you go to court and say the client did not commit this, you would be failing in your fiduciary duty as an officer of the court because as, as, as a legal practitioner, we owe it to the court as well that 
we must have the court to administer justice. That's why it does not mean at all costs, but it says administer justice. Now the client has confessed to you, you go to court knowing that he has uh, accepted to have committed this offense. When a charge is put to him, he pleads not guilty. Obviously, he is not, that is not according to your instructions. At that stage, you will have to advise the court that these are not my instructions. I will now have to withdraw on the matter so that we help the process to move smoothly because if you continue on that matter, you'll be misleading the court as well. So now our last question, quick question is, the attorney involved in the Clava matter has been uh, very open about uh, what it seems that his, her client is going to plead uh, in terms of being a, a, an occult-related crime, the fact that he's selling his house, he's going to jail for a very long time, uh, a lot of detail about his personal life. I mean, she acts on instruction from client, but... Are there cases where perhaps she's revealing too many cards and, and saying too much? Yeah, in, in particular in the, in the media, the, those discussions maybe would be fine if they were taking place between the state and, and the defense attorney so that they prepare their, uh, their plea, admission of guilt, because there's always going to be that engagement. Because if the accused person did not even waste the court time, the way that the court resources, there would have been a lenient in terms of the sentencing that would, would be imposed there because one of the issues that the court would have to check, the minimum sentence, the application of the minimum sentence, the compelling reasons to, to deviate from that, uh, which is prescribed by the legislation. But to take it to the media uh, would not be, it's not, it's not always ideal uh, at this stage. Perhaps to say the client admitted to have committed the offense, maybe that would have been enough. Is selling the house, what is going to happen with the proceeds? Well, those, those are the questions that must be answered as well. Was that money meant for him to flee or to fund uh, the, legal, the litigation? Well, what was it for? So those are the questions that, of course, journalists will, will be asking. So it's more like now a premeditated kind of a, a murder in this case. And if, again, the state is able to press on or they just go there and admit to the premeditation, the, the implications thereof of the harsher sentence that he may face. So it's not always ideal that the practitioner must disclose too much in the media, in particular if the matter is yet to go to, to, to court. Thank you so much. That was political commentator and legal commentator Sunao Makangela. Thanks so much for your time. Just a note to say that defense attorney Santi Human has not responded to our calls to discuss the case on air and perhaps quite rightly taps because if I had an attorney I would say to them although well, the even though we're very pushy yeah. uh, do not say a word to the media please yeah although you know, you know we did speak to an expert a few I think it was last week or, or the week before who we was speaking about um, what she said in regards to Satanism and satanic yeah. cult and so you know one wonders if that was part of the strategy if coming out and perhaps. speaking to the media was perhaps part of the strategy to perhaps yeah. be admitted uh, as a state patient yeah. or something like that well coming